CD number 1000, baby. I now have 1000 CDs in my collection, and the number 1000 title goes to Kiss Destroyer. I picked this up at McKay's pretty recently, and I've loved this album ever since I was a kid, so um, the fact that this is CD number 1000 is quite the honor. Uh, Detroit Rock City, God of Thunder, Flaming Youth, uh, Shout It Out Loud, great stuff. Um, it's taken quite some time and some work to get to 1,000 CDs and to make sure that it is a quality over quantity thing because barely anything in this collection sucks. Um, a few years ago, when I was downsizing my record collection, a lot of people thought that I was crazy for doing so, but with the cost factor of vinyl versus CDs, uh, that's what made it possible because as I was selling my records, I was rebuying a lot of those albums on CD. Uh, for instance, uh, the Ramones albums, I was able to sell six of my Ramones records and then I was able to buy the entire catalog on CD with that money for the six records. So yeah, why don't we take a look? Okay, so last time I did a CD collection video, I was in the ballpark of 650 CDs and that was on August 19th, 2021. Uh, of course, this is my pre-pack CD tower that I bought off of Amazon for $220 a couple years ago. And all four panels are filled up. It looks like I'm going to need another CD tower soon, don't you think? <laughs> this thing can hold something to the ballpark of 1,100 CDs, and I kind of want to get one just for my movies. Uh, the main thing that I worry about with buying CDs lately is... Um, I try to avoid the Russian counterfeits, and I also try to avoid the manufactured-on-demand CDRs that they make now for some of the older albums. Um, I've been burned a couple times on a couple Cure albums and a couple Susie and the Banshee albums, but it wouldn't be so bad if the artworks didn't look like shit, but they're fuzzy, they're blurry, they look like hell. I just prefer to buy the authentic original versions. So, I'm going to go slower this time, since people complained that I went a little too fast last time. Okay, so top shelf. Let's see, we've got ABC Diablo. Great metal band from California. I talked about them many years ago on my Life is Abuse video. <sighs> I've been doing videos for a long time. Let's see, we got Abscess, which if you're a fan of Autopsy, you'll probably love Abscess too, because they're basically the same band, just with a different lineup, slightly. Um, they, they do the death metal stuff like Autopsy does, but they also do like this raw, sloppy punk sound, I suppose. And they also are known for doing psychedelic stuff, I guess. This weird, trippy, wow, 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 you know. I, I love the sticker on this album. Parental Advisory, totally fucking sick. Let's see, Through the Cracks of Death, awesome stuff. Dawn of Inhumanity. This is actually in the wrong place, but uh, this this I love these little books that Peaceville puts out for their albums. Sometimes they do them for the Dark Throne albums. I think they do them for the My Dying Bride albums. And I bought this album digitally the day it came out. I loved it back then, and I still love it now. This was the last album they ever released, and it's a shame because it was really fucking good. <laughs> Let's see, bringing it back to the beginning, one of the first metal albums I ever heard, the Abscess and Population Reduction Split. Just excellent fucking death metal and grindcore on this album so good you know on on the population reduction side we have cannabis holocaust um babies are assholes <laughs> it's my mantra since i'm child free uh let's see uh, bourbon blood and butchery this collection is basically the counterpart to thirst for blood hunger for flesh as they are both collections of split tracks ep stuff um unreleased stuff i suppose demos maybe i don't know it, it, it's just really good, okay? It's abscess. Buy it. <laughs> Let's see. And, of course, we got ACDC, mate, from Australia. And they got their song, Big Balls, which is one of the greatest songs of all time. It's, it's very funny, especially if you're a mature man like I am. <laughs> and, of course, there's Ball Breaker, which is actually one of their worst, but I like the way the album sounds. So, there you go. Ace Frehley. Fraley's Comet, excellent solo album from The Spaceman, and I personally like Space Invader quite a bit as well. Uh, since everybody's obsessed with Acid Bath these days, as they should be, uh, have both Acid Bath albums, both originals. Um, I think you should buy the originals because the 2004 remasters sound like ass. But um, before anybody asks, I think that Kite String is the overall superior album 
Although my favorite songs are on pagan terrorism tactics, like Bleed Me an Ocean, Grey Flower, excellent stuff. It's like this one has higher highs and lower lows, if that makes any sense. Uh, Aerosmith, not that big of an Aerosmith fan, but I said why not, so... The remastered Agaloc albums um, of Stone, Wind, and Peller that got remastered in the last couple of years, and it sounds excellent. Um, I used to own an original Pale Folklore, and I think that this remastered version sounds better. Even though they changed the artwork, it doesn't really bother me because it's kind of the same concept. Uh, my favorite Agaloc album is probably Marrow of the Spirit, as I prefer the raw Agaloc sounds as opposed to the polished Agaloc sounds, like, say, on Ashes Against the Grain. I wish that band would fucking get back together already. Come on. Oh, also, I love the way that this CD is embossed. It looks so good. This one also has, like, this cool die-cut CD case. Alabama Thunder Pussy, I bought this album because Kyle Thomas of X Order sings on it, and he tears it up as he tears up anything that he's involved in. Let's see. Alice Cooper, yeah. Billion dollar babies. Let's see, second shelf. Get you a good view of that here. Um, Alice Cooper, welcome to my nightmare. If you're going to buy this album, make sure that you get the version that has the full five minute version of Welcome to My Nightmare on there because some versions have the single edit that's three minutes. Why would you do that? Like, it, it replaces the album version. What the fuck? Alice Cooper, Brutal Planet, and Dragon Town. Dragon Town's okay, but I really bought this because I love the song Brutal Planet. He plays the shit out of this song live, and I love it. Let's see, we got Amber Asylum, which is nice neoclassical music. Good stuff to relax to, and I believe that one of the women on this CD ended up in a band called Wormy Rob Rose, which is another CD that I have in this collection. We've got Amon Amarth vs. The World. Yeah. Man, I'm going to be jamming out while I'm looking at this. <laughs> okay, we got Anthrax. Um, everybody's favorite band in the Big Four. <laughs> Attack of the Killer Bees, of course. We've got Starting Up a Posse and uh, Bring the Noises on here as well. Uh, Stomp 442, which is terrible. <laughs> Sound of White Noise is excellent, though. The song only. <clears throat> Good shit. Let's see, we got At the Gates, The Red in the Sky is Ours, and With Fear I Kiss the Burning Darkness. Excellent stuff. Now, it seems like with At the Gates, people seem to be in two camps. They prefer these two albums, or they prefer Slaughter of the Soul, because really, those are two different styles that the band are good at doing, and they play the shit out of both styles. It's hard to beat At the Gates. I need to get some of their later stuff. It's excellent. Autopsy, of course, one of my favorite bands. Uh, this is the uncensored artwork for Severed Survival. Awesome stuff. And one of the best albums ever made, we have Mental Funeral. And this comes in a Super Jewel box, I think it's called. I, I fucking hate these things. <laughs> but <laughs> admittedly, they're probably not as flimsy as a standard jewel case. So I, I guess that's what they were trying to go for. But that artwork, man so good and it looks so good on a t-shirt that's that's why they've sold so many damn t-shirts of these albums um let's see i also like to keep the obi strips and if they come with obi strips sometimes i put them in these little plastic sealers that sellers sometimes put cds in when i buy them from them uh shit fun hadn't even opened this one uh yeah i gotta put this back <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, All Tomorrow's Funerals, excellent collection of EPs and bonus tracks that made it on some of the remastered stuff. Live in Chicago. Now, this, um, I wanted to be at this show, and I was gonna book the flight to go see them, and I didn't go. And they ended up making a fucking live album out of it. Damn it! <laughs> I, it's, it's always been kind of a dream of mine to be at a show where a live album was being recorded. And, of course, the last Autopsy album... Oh, oh, don't put this back. Morbidity Triumphant. Pretty good stuff, but it's pretty much what you expect from Autopsy at this point. Okay, we're going to look at this shelf right here. We got some first CD press Bathory stuff. I mean, I might say original press, but... See, these weren't pressed in the 1980s. These were pressed in the early 90s. And, um, yeah, it's a little blurry, but that's kind of the quality control of Black Mark back in the day. 
let's see badlands underrated awesome fucking band jakey lee excellent stuff uh bad brains self-titled album being one of my favorite albums ever I, it, ne- it never gets old you know you, you listen to it and it radiates so much fucking positivity i i love it uh let's see what else got the beach boys this one sticks out like a sore thumb <laughs> but but it's a good album you know i mean i mean listen to this it's the harmonies are excellent the songs are well written great stuff between the buried and me they're from north carolina and i've been wanting to see them for the longest time excellent stuff got colors of course can't go without colors and this one i might actually like better than that so there you go bikini kill hard to beat some bikini kill excellent stuff and i got into these ladies because of dystopia we're bikini kill and we want revolution love and bauhaus look at this fucking bauhaus box that i got this is mm. It has most of the albums except for the reunion album that they did in the 2000s. They're all remastered. It has all the singles. The one thing it doesn't have, though, is the original Bela Lugosi's Dead. I had to buy the Greatest Hits album, Crackle. That had the original Bela Lugosi's Dead. Sometimes it's hard to find CD versions with the original. Like, you'll find versions with the remix version, but it sucks, so... (laughs) Let's see, Benediction. Yeah. This album kind of sucks, but, you know, Grind Bastard, Transcend the Rubicon, good underrated death metal. Some Black Sabbath, some Black Flag, oh yeah, first four years. And of course we got My War, love that album. Uh, The remastered versions of the Black Sabbath albums, because I know that a lot of people rail against remastered albums sometimes, but honestly, I think these sound amazing. Uh, This is the 2009 Deluxe Edition of Master of Reality, and it is the best version I've ever heard on CD. Excellent stuff. And these uh, 2016 or 2015 remasters that are available in these digipacks, I think they sound absolutely wonderful. Very full. Very high resolution. And these, Heaven and Hell and The Mob Rules... These are the Andy Pierce remasters that came out in the last couple of years, and they sound magical. Ugh. Which the Dio years are what I prefer for Black Sabbath anyway, but man. Uh, Tony Iommi said that he found the master tapes for Born Again. I cannot wait for that to be remixed. Uh, this is the German edition mastered by Hans Brethauer, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I mean, it sounds okay for that album, but that album never sounded good. <laughs> Seven Star, Black Sabbath featuring Tony Iommi, stupidest name for an artist ever. That would be like Megadeth featuring Dave Mustaine. Uh, the Blackouts, um, if you're a Ministry fan, then you probably know that this was Paul Barker's band before joining Ministry. Excellent post-punk. Blues Brothers, briefcase full of blues. It's okay, but really, the main sell is the soundtrack everybody body count cop killer you know that this is the version that has cop killer because it has cop killer on his chest now if you find the version that says body count on his chest it doesn't have cop killer thank you ic for reposting that video by the way and of course bolt thrower one of the greatest bands of all time i miss them i i really miss them uh, these digipacks for the Metal Blade albums right here, they all come with bonus tracks. Like a symbol of eight. That is not on the standard CD version. Let's see. I'm a bit of a Pixies fan myself, so got the Breeders right here. Last Splash. Okay, gonna pause here. Butthole Surfers. Hard to beat the Butthole Surfers. We got Double Live, which... It's got exercise music. And we have an extra copy of Buck Satan and the 666 Shooters, which was signed by Uncle Al himself. Thank you, Craig, for sending that to me. Burn the Priest, because I'm not much of a Lamb of God fan, but I do like Burn the Priest. So, and this and this awesome Corpus Delicti box set, yes. They are awesome goth rock from France. And this box set, uh, Cleopatra has been releasing box sets like these in the past few years, uh, comes with a booklet. I love when they come with booklets. It's not often that these box sets come with booklets, but like the paper's real sleek and glossy. Mm. Comes with pictures, a little history of the band. 
has all of the albums and a desk full of stuff that was not on the albums. Hopefully they can come to the United States at some point. Got Carcass. Now, this Carcass album I own for the artwork because if you open it up, you'll get the full artwork, but... It doesn't sound as good as the full dynamic range version that they released later. And of course, we have Heartwork, which I don't really like, but this is the Ultimate Edition that doesn't sound brick-walled and clipped like the 2000s versions of this album. Now, it's the Ultimate Edition. The problem is there are no lyrics, there are no booklets, nothing. Just, that's it. That's your packaging for you right there. I don't know, I, I'm i fine, I can tolerate hard work, but the thing is, like, I feel like they used up their best ideas in the first four songs, and then the rest of the album drags uncontrollably. I, I don't know, I've, I've really tried with it, and it's, it just doesn't do anything for me. I, I fall asleep in the second half, okay? As for Torn Arteries, it's alright. Actually, I think Surgical Steel might be their best album. Like, for me, it, it depends on the day, but it's between that and necroticism, I suppose. Because necroticism is just old-school death metal to the max. And we have Wake Up and Smell the Carcass, which, if you open this, it has the Kennedy headshot. Carnivore, of course. We got the Price Killers versions of both of the albums. Got some Cathedral. Yes! On this shelf, we have Charles Mingus, which sticks out like a sore thumb, but did I say excellent enough times? <laughs> Christian Death, Only Fear of Pain, one of the best goth rock albums of all time. Uh, Roz Williams was an absolute genius. May he rest in peace. This is an original pressing because the newer remaster that they have done in 2010, I believe, the tracks are indexed weird, and there's a weird skipping glitch on one of the songs. Let's see The Church. Under the Milky Way tonight. Remember Donnie Darko? That's where I first heard that song. Circle Jerks, Group Sex, and Wild in the Streets. Two albums on the same disc. A great buy if you ask me. Of course, we're, we just got finished talking about goth rock. We've got Clan of Zymox. This is their first album. Um, I really like it. Um, I also really like Medusa. And then there's Creatures. Opium and poison. <laughs> when I first heard that song, I ended up listening to it on repeat like a teenager. Just over and over and over. All summer, pretty much. Uh, the Clash. This is the U.S. version, I think. So this is the one that has I Fought the Law. Yep, this one has I Fought the Law, so this is the U.S. version. But I also have the box set, which has the U.K. version. Okay, so this box set has every Clash album up to Combat Rock, which is <laughs> a good place to stop. If you know, you know. Uh, let's see, it comes with this uh, stencil right here. It's very nice. And, and what's cool here is that these are packaged like LPs, but the CDs are also housed like LPs. So they come in these little paper sleeves, and they, they're actually really nice, and they sound excellent. I mean, they're, they're a little louder than the originals, but... They sound good. They're high resolution, and they use the UK version of The Clash for The Clash, so. Basically, this is a condensed version of the 2013 box set sound system. Um, so instead of getting a million live albums, you just get the studio albums. Uh, let's see, there are also the Cocteau Twins, which these are all originals, because the remasters done by their own guitar player sound very harsh, and I suspect that they may have fucked with the songs a little bit. Um, I also have the collaboration album with Harold Budd. Uh, great music. I just have to kind of be in the mood to listen to them because, you know, made up language. I, I, I have it on Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, this one is a special edition of their last album, which I don't really like, but uh, this is held together by a magnet and you unfold it like so. CD packaging in the 90s was so cool. <laughs> Concrete Blonde. Here's an example of an album where I only like the first song and the rest of the album kind of sucks. <laughs> I know some people are going to say, oh, but I like the rest of the album. Uh, trust me, Bloodletting is pretty much the reason I bought it. I think I paid $2 for it, and it was priced appropriately. Let's see, Corrosion of Conformity. This one's still got the hype sticker. Cradle of Filth. Hard to beat Cradle of Filth. Oh, yeah, Dusk and Her Embrace. 
Although personally, my favorite is Cruelty and the Beast. Mm, yes. There's Median. This is the promo version, so it doesn't come with all the cool artworks and stuff. Better Sweets. That's a good one. Godspeed and the Devil's Thunder. Some people say that's the last good album they put out. I don't know. I haven't really heard anything beyond it. Uh, Damnation in a Day. Okay, I put this in the wrong place. Creedence Clearwater Revival. Oh, yeah. Classic stuff. Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. It's not exactly my music, but I guess it's fine. <laughs> Let's see, the Crow soundtrack, one of the best movie soundtracks of all time. You know, you got Pantera, you got Nine Inch Nails, Helmet. Gotta love Helmet. Crowbar, of course. There are three albums here. Um, Odd Fellows Rest, Equilibrium, and Sonic Excess in its purest form. It, unfortunately, doesn't have the bonus track for Equilibrium, but... Oh, well. Let's see, The Crown, Death Race King, Hard to Beat... And we've got some Cure. Uh, these are all remasters, but I'm getting ready to see them in New Orleans in May, so I've been catching up on some of their albums. Always love The Cure. Huge respect for them. The Top, I listened to this again recently for the first time in years, and it was better than I remembered it to be. Meanwhile, Wild Mood Swings was worse than I remembered it to be, so... Um, all of those are remastered, except for Disintegration, which arguably sounds better with its original mix. See, so Staring at the Sea, of course, has some of the non-album tracks. And we have The Damned. Hard to beat The Damned. Uh, my personal favorite album of theirs is The Black Album absolutely amazing then there's phantasmagoria which some people don't like this era of the damned i'd say that this album is really good but ignore anything afterwards <laughs> uh, strawberries for pigs also an awesome album dangerous toys mm -mm. doesn't that bring you back uh danzig we have black aria mm. yes a little cheesy sounding, but it's a good album. Yeah, Panzerfaust. Uh, let's see, Dark Tranquility, The Gallery, one of my favorite death metal albums of all time. Just stunning to listen to. Beautiful music. And let's see, Dave Brocky, The Dave Brocky Experience. <laughs> Some dumb fucking songs on these albums. You want to suck my dick. You want to lick my stick. Suck my dick. <laughs> what the fuck, Dave? Uh, speaking of Dave, we've got pretty much every David Bowie album there ever was right here. Uh, most of these are the Ryko Dust that came out in the early 90s. That hunky dory right here. Um, Young Americans, this is the 2007 version with a 5.1 mix. Sounds amazing. We've got the 2010 version of Station to Station, which, again, sounds amazing. Comes with a couple live discs. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. The packaging on this is nice, too, which I'm not going to open here, but let's see, original version of Let's Dance, because that was one of the first CDs ever pressed, so. And as it so happens, while I was filming, I just had a pretty good mail day. I have four Emulation albums that just came in. These three came from Listenable Records over in France, because that is the only cheap way i guess to get these three albums as they're kind of a pain in the ass to find the united states this is the brazilian pressing that came out a couple of years ago of here and after i love this band <laughs> and let's see i got the cure wish original mix very awesome uh listenable was nice enough to send me this sticker and they sent me a couple postcards and the guy who sent me the wish album sent me a new york city postcard must be a postcard kind of day Man, that is awesome. It might be a good time to mention that um, between filming the intro for this video and filming this, I have 1,016 CDs. You weren't actually keeping count, were you? <laughs> okay, now we are starting on panel two. David Bowie stuff continued. We have the next day, which is still brand new and sealed. McKay's, $8. Uh, Black Star, his final album. Beautiful album. And some David Lee Roth. Oh, yeah. 
Eat Em and Smile. Hard to beat this one. The lineup on this album was insane. Steve Vai and uh, the drummer, he's got a YouTube channel. It's really awesome. Dead Boys. Hard to beat some Dead Boys. Mm. See, I, I really like that 70s punk stuff. You know, like the CBGB's bands. Uh, let's see, Dead Can Dance, of course. More Dead Can Dance. Some Dead Kennedys, which these albums I actually found at Goodwill for 50 cents a piece, if you can believe that. Of course, there are all the Death albums. Uh, most of these are the Century Media versions that came out in the late 90s. Uh, some people prefer the originals. I say these sound fine. Um, and the only relapse one that I have is Human, because even though it's more compressed than the original, it's still an overall better sounding album. Of course, we got Symbolic, we've got Sound of Perseverance. This is the one with the DVD that came out in 2005, I think. Uh, live in 1998. Okay. Decapitated. Oh, yeah. These guys were so young when they did this album, and it <clears throat> still holds the test of time. Deicide. Hard to beat some Deicide. Oh, yeah, the demos. Fucking legendary. And the live album, When Satan Lives. Thank you, Jason of Origin, for getting me on to this one. Deep Purple, made in Japan. Original pressing, which you can still buy brand new, believe it or not. Deep Purple, Perfect Strangers. Oh, yeah. Now, that's a comeback album. Now, this one I've been waiting for for years. Um, Demigod's uh, Slumber of Sullen Eyes. This has been out of print for a long time, and they repressed it. And it has this giant booklet, like 30 pages. Oh, look at that picture of the band right there. You're going to be reading this for a long time if you get this. Totally worth the money. Talks about the history of the band and some of the other albums they released. Uh, let's see, Depeche Mode, Some Great Reward. Uh, there are a few songs I like on this album, but honestly, um, I'm not that big of a fan of their early work. So, yeah, to me, Depeche Mode was best during the 90s when they released Violator and Songs of Faith and Devotion and Ultra. Those are my three favorite Depeche Mode albums. And speaking of Depeche Mode, we can go on to the second shelf of this panel where we have two copies of Black Celebration. Uh, this one is an original pressing, and this one is the special edition that came out in 2007 with the 5.1 surround mix. But the stupidest thing about it, the bonus tracks are on the DVD, so they're not on the CD. So the only way you can listen to the bonus tracks is if you put the fucking DVD in. That's stupid! Why was it not on the audio disc? That makes as much sense as a tampon at a bachelor party. The singles, Greatest Hits compilation, which some of these mixes I actually prefer to the album mixes, and the latest album, Memento Mori, which is good for the most part. Let's see, we got two albums by D. Krupps, which a fan was nice enough to send me these because he found them at a thrift store. And he was just like, oh yeah, thank you for getting me onto a bunch of bands with your videos. I was like, oh, well, thank you. Discharge, Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. A classic hardcore punk album. Disciples of Mockery, if you are an Incantation fan, then this is the Golgotha lineup for the most part, just without John. And this is really good. This is actually the re-release version because this has the actual artwork instead of just a black artwork when it was self-released in 1999. Uh, Dismember, like an ever-flowing stream. Classic Swedish death metal. Uh, this one is Indecent and Obscene and Pieces. Two CDs for the price of one. Dissection, the Somberlin. Mmm, this is the two-disc version with the demo tracks and the bonus tracks. So good. Need to get more of their stuff. Let's see, Download. This is supposed to come with a lenticular case, but that wasn't the case for this album, but I'm a big Skinny Puppy fan, so had to have this. Let's see, all three of the Drab Majesty albums to date. Hopefully they release a new one in the next year or so. Dream Theater's box set. Um, I got this for $40, and it's 10 albums. I'm going to be honest, though, I'm not that big of a Dream Theater fan. I mean, I, I appreciate it for what it is, but, like... My favorite album in this set is Images and Words, and of the other stuff, there's there's songs I like, but I, won't, I wouldn't want to listen to a whole album. Dying Fetus, Grotesque Impalement. I had been looking for this CD for a long time, and I finally found it some time ago, and it's brutal. Okay, the Life is Abuse pressings of the Dystopia albums. 
uh, for a long time. They were my favorite band, and Tank Crimes has been reissuing these, and thank you, Scotty. Got some Eagle of Death Metal. Oh, yeah. Let's see, Edge of Sanity, Crimson. Classic, classic Swedish Death Metal album. Let's see some Brian Eno for you. Baby's on fire. And Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Entombed. Oh, yeah. Left Hand Path is one of my favorite albums of all time. I'd say the first three Entombed albums, you can't go wrong. Then, of course, we got the compilation right here with some of their EPs and some of their non-album tracks. Very nice. Escape from L.A. I bought this album because there's a Ministry song recorded during the Filth Peg sessions that was not released on the Filth Peg album. X Order, signed by Vinny and Kyle. Slaughter in the Vatican and The Law. This is the Two from the Vault release, which... Some of those albums sound like shit. Um, live Death, which recorded live at the Milwaukee Metal Fest, has Suffocation, Malevolent Creation, Cancer, and Exorder! I'm, I'm going to say it like Kyle now. Exorder! Let's see, the Exorder demos, Slaughter in the Vatican and Get Rude. Uh, they sound very scratchy and lo-fi, but I wanted to own these demos physically. Hopefully someday they can re-release those in high quality, remaster them. Then there's more in the Southern Skies, which I'm going to be honest with you, I don't like this album. I can't really believe that it gets so much glowing praise as it does, but uh, look, I love Venny. I love the guys, but it, it just doesn't sound like XOR to me. XOR to me is hateful stuff like Homicide and Anal Lust and Desecrator. And then you get this stuff, which is like bar rock, I guess. I don't know. Let's see, Exhumed, Gore Metal, the re-recorded version that includes the original album. Of course, you don't really have any reason to listen to the re-recorded version. You just want to listen to the original Open the Abscess with that awesome scream. <laughs> Slaughter Cult. Badass album. Yeah, good shit. Hard to beat Exhumed. I've seen them live twice and they put on a hell of a show. Hopefully I can see them again soon. Then there's Exodo, which was released by Dead by Dawn Records. Hi, Laura, if you're watching. <laughs> X-Pain, nice Canadian metal. Extreme, which is kind of wimpy at times, but the guitar player is really good. So, <laughs> you know, if you want to hear some good guitar work, three sides to every story. Ooh. Exumer, a fan sent me this one. Very nice of them. Thank you so much. Faith in the Muse. Yes. Oh, actually, these are switched. Yeah, so yeah, little mistakes here and there, but yeah, Faith in the Muse, a nice ethereal gothic rock, I suppose, because I've been getting into that kind of music for the past year or so. Um, I've always been kind of in the area of it, but I've been really delving into it uh, since probably June of 22, and I've been really enjoying it, hearing a lot of bands that have been inspiring me. Oh yeah, some Faith No More for you. Found these albums for $2 a piece at McKay's and couldn't pass them up. Some fear. I love living in the city. Yeah, you, yeah, you get to hear me sing all of these renditions of these songs on these albums. Fight, Halford's band after he left Judas Priest. War of Words is a fantastic album. Um, a Small Deadly Space really sucks, but... So the slipcase goes on to the CD case like so. And then with the CD case... Opens off like this, and then the booklet, it's like this, and it's got little notes and commentary. Continuing, we have Filter. Classic 90s alternative metal, I suppose. Hey man, nice shot. And I bought these albums, actually, after I met Richard Patrick at an airport in Cleveland, because he was playing on stage with Nine Inch Nails the night before, and when I was dropped off at the airport, he happened to be dropped off in the same 60 seconds that I was dropped off. So I approached him and I kindly asked him for a picture while I complimented his performance the night before. And he was happy to oblige. Uh, needless to say, I wanted to be sure that I had these albums in my collection. So yeah, there they are. Filter. Floodgate. Some Kyle Thomas action for you. Nice sludge metal. And Fetus again. The same fan that sent me the Decrups albums that I mentioned earlier, he sent me all of these Fetus albums. Nice, interesting, old-school industrial. 
classic stuff. Uh, side note, this is a live album with Lydia Lunch, recorded and released in 1997. And I, I guess she does some kind of stream of consciousness slam poetry type stuff while he does the harsh music. And it, and it sounds cool at first, but like three or four songs in, you listen to it and you think, good God, Lydia, go see a therapist. Because she just, she just goes off. Whew. Let's see, 242. Hard to beat 242. Tyranny for you. Yes. Frontline Assembly, Millennium, and Tactical Neural Implant. Two excellent albums by a classic industrial band from Vancouver, I think. Hardwired is my personal favorite of theirs. I'm hopefully going to be seeing them in Richmond next month. I know they're going to be opening for ministry pretty soon, but I don't particularly want to see Al Jorgensen lip sync for a fourth time. So, yeah, I'd rather go see Frontline Headline. See, I'm going to talk in my narrator voice like this while I talk about the Frozen Autumn. It's a very beautiful synth music right here, you know. Yeah, I found this for $2 over at McKay's. Hard to beat. You can find this album and download it for free off the Bandcamp page. It's totally worth it. <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. Uh, Fugazi. Fugazi. Yeah! Fu Manchu. I know everybody likes Fu Manchu. They're pretty good. I feel like they're kind of discount pentagram. I don't know. Like it, It's good music. It just makes me want to listen to pentagram. You know what I mean? And what's on the G shelf that starts with the George Carlin box set? This is the Little David Years, and this is cool because you turn the box around and it <laughs> makes faces at you. But this has all of his 1970s albums, and it even has a bonus disc with a few unreleased stuff. Uh, free complimentary extra bonus disc, not a, not for sale anywhere. Okay, so, yeah, and everything comes in these little LP sleeves. Got F&M right here. Sorry, um, F&M and A.M. He is my favorite comedian of all time. I still remember the day he died. I was rather sad. Let's see, Janet Tortures, nice industrial metal. If you're a fan of Morbid Angel, perhaps you know that Evil D was in this band and might still be in this band on the recordings if they ever record again but let's see we got the japanese version of sin city which has a few extra songs huh gonna have to replace the case for this one but comes with, uh, this one's actually autographed by jen herself so that's cool we got flesh is the law <clears throat> hard to beat and then there's ghost now, the only Ghost album that I have where it says Ghost BC is this one, and the rest of them, it's all just Ghost. Uh, yeah, Impero, which, good album, not as good as Perkel, but Perkel was such a high mark for me. Actually, this one might be my favorite Ghost album because I've heard it so many times. You know, I, I basically had this in my truck all summer when it came out. Then, of course, there's Ghoul! Harder to beat the fucking Ghoul! They got this live album live in the flesh, and they're releasing the VHS tape on DVD very soon. I can't wait to get it. That way I can play it on my modern technology, and I don't have to go to the fucking Salvation Army to get a VCR! Okay. Butthole Surfers fan, so here's Gibby Haynes and his problem, which features some Butthole Surfers members. This is actually a pretty good album. Uh, Paul Leary's solo album, uh, Born Stupid, is also as close as you can get to the Butthole Surfers now because I guess they can't agree on whether they should just tour or just record albums, which is a shame because I feel like they should do both, but they're a bunch of old guys, so let's see, we got Godflesh, awesome industrial metal, one of the pioneers, hard to beat, their influence can't be denied, it's a shame they never made a lot of money. Street Cleaner, this is the two-disc remaster that came out in 2010, I think. And it sounds excellent. You know, the original one, I owned the original one for a while, and it was pretty quiet. This one, the volume's appropriate for what it is. Got Pure. Mm. Which may be just as good, if not slightly better than Street Cleaner, if you ask me. Slave State. Mm. Now, that's some good stuff. I was obsessed with Godflesh when I was in middle school. You know, I used to wear a Godflesh hoodie around everywhere. People would ask me, what the hell is Godflesh? Merciless. Brutal EP. Brutal! Godflesh actually has a new album coming out. It's going to be called Purge. 
and I can't wait to hear it. I'm gonna try to get the Japanese version because that one is supposed to have some bonus tracks. It's got us and them, which for some reason is a little difficult to find now, but it wasn't as good as I remember it to be when I last listened to it. We got Messiah, which came out after they broke up, and it is insanely heavy. Then there's this curious box set. This is Long Live the New Flesh, which has all of the newer God Flesh stuff, like A World Lit Only by Fire and Post Self, as well as Decline and Fall, if I can pull these out. And this is a bonus disc with some Japanese-only songs. It was about a $50 box set that I got brand new on Amazon, worth every penny. Let's see, Grief, Dismal. I paid $60 for this, which is pretty much what I paid for the two records separately, because this is two records. It's got the self-titled EP, and then it's got the Dismal EP. And on CD, it's two of them together. And this is the original, because the remastered one is loud as shit. Hurts my ears. Hard to beat Grief. I've been wanting to do a video on them for the longest time. Torso. Mm. And man will become the hunted. Mm. There's a song on here called No Escape. So good. Gets you in the mood for that nice sludgy metal. Grind Madness at the BBC. Mm, this one has Napalm Death, Extreme Noise Terror, Carcass, Bolthor, Godflesh, Unseen Terror, An Intense Degree, and Heresy. Nobody really knows who these bands are anymore, but... <laughs> I'm talking about the last two, but let's see. Guar, hello, this is the Dutch version, which has an extra track, Black and Huge. Hopefully, they can remaster this album one day, because I think it should be back in print. I feel like it doesn't get its fair shake by Guar fans. And this one, of course, The Road Behind, which was autographed by Dave Brocky himself. May he rest in peace. This Toilet Earth, which has the band song, BDF. You know, they repressed this on vinyl a few years ago, and BDF wasn't on it. What the fuck? I mean, if you're gonna repress it, go all the way with it, man. And of course we got more Guar. Oh yeah, Beyond Hell. That's an underrated album. Let There Be Guar, which is their demos pre-Hello. Awesome stuff. We got Bloody Pit of Horror. This is the German edition, because the United States edition is packaged so shittily. But this one... There's actually a holder that you can put the disc in. Isn't that nice? Uh, let's see, Battle Massimus. This is the one with two bonus tracks, Carry On My Wayward Son and Wheel of Punishment. Um, excellent bonus tracks. Guar has always been able to do great covers. Uh, have you heard their cover of Shebop? It's really good. And of course we got Hemorrhage, awesome gore grind from Spain. They met at Cult, Anatomical Inferno, which this one's got some bonus tracks. Mark Sweet Home. Mm. Hail of Bullets. This has Martin Van Drunen, I believe, on vocals. Um, Heaven and Hell. The awesome lineup with Ronnie Dio and Geezer Butler and Tony Iommi. Hellhammer, Apocalyptic Raids. Mm -hmm. Excellent stuff. Now, this doesn't have the contents of Apocalyptic Raids, so... It's one of those things where you get you gotta buy them separately if you want to own everything. Then, of course, there's Helmet. Now, that's some 1990s for you. His Hero is Gone, awesome crust punk from Nashville, Tennessee. Unfortunately, they're not together anymore. Um, they went on to form the band Tragedy, which is all right. Another band that I used to be obsessed with when I was younger, but not so much these days. How to Destroy Angels, the little side project with Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross, and Trent's wife, Mary Queen. And then, of course, there's Huey Lewis and the News. Their early stuff is a little too new wave for my taste, but when sports came out in 83, they really came into their own, commercially and artistically. I, Between Two Worlds, mm. Awesome black metal supergroup. It's a shame they never made a second album, but this album fucking rules. Then, of course, there's Iggy and the Stooges, Raw Power, the deluxe edition, which has the original mix. Debatably the only way to listen to it. 
How about Iggy Pop, The Idiot, and Lust for Life? Makes you think of train spotting, doesn't it? And actually, this version of China Girl is superior to the David Bowie version of China Girl, if you ask me. Close to a world below. Now listen, if you sometimes get in a metal slump, or if you forget what you like about metal, listen to this album. This will remind you what is so great about death metal, and it, it may even reignite your spark. Who knows? This album is the stuff of legends. Definitely check it out. Let's see, we've got Immortal. Yeah. Mm. This was one of the first black metal albums I ever bought. Let's see, we've got Impaled. This is Mondo Medical or Mondo Medicale, however you pronounce it, which is probably the best album they ever did. But curiously, we have the original The Dead Shall Dead Remain and the re-recorded version of that album, which is The Dead Still Dead Remain. It was actually cheaper for them to re-record this album note for note than it would have been to buy the rights back from the record company, so that's what they did. They re-recorded it note for note, even the packaging is pretty much the same. Industrial Accident, the story of Wax Tracks Records. This has a couple of songs that never got released, and I am quite happy to own it. Very gnarly. And there's another really good industrial compilation here, which is the only place on CD that you can currently get the LP mix of Dig It by Skinny Puppy. As the CD version of that album has the seven minute version instead of the six minute version. What the fuck, man? Why don't you put both versions on the CD? Let's see, we got Infester. Mm. Good cult following type of band. And we've got Iron Maiden. All original mixes of every album up to No Prayer for the Dying. And some of these are the 95 Castle versions, which have bonus tracks or bonus CDs, I suppose. So, Old Iron Maiden is hard to beat. And in this case, we have the number of the beast, which the artwork is blue instead of this grayish artwork that they're doing now. I like this one better. And before anybody asks, my favorite Iron Maiden album is Somewhere in Time. That was the first Maiden album that I ever heard. I love the atmosphere. I love the space themes. Just so good. Let's see, Jane's Addiction. We have the uncensored artworks for these. Feel free to look them up. And the Jack Officers, since, again, I'm a Butthole Surfers fan. Uh, this album sucks, <laughs> but hopefully someday you will see a Butthole Surfers video from me. So that is my primary reason for owning this album. Onto the J-Shelf, we have The Jesus and Mary Chain, which the albums are kind of good, but I saw them live a few years ago and I thought they sucked. Uh, the Jesus Lizard, also excellent stuff. If you're into similar music, it's like the same category, I suppose. Uh, Joan Jett, Bad Reputation. Joan Jett, I Love Rock and Roll. Uh, Joey Ramone's solo album. Let's see, some Johnny Thunders, speaking of punk. Oh yeah, that nice 70s punk sound. I love that. Joy Division. Mmm. Hard to beat Joy Division. One of the original post-punk slash goth rock bands, I suppose. Mmm. -hmm. Whichever version of Dead Souls that you prefer, it's it's just a well-written song. Judas Iscariot. Mmm. Found this at McKay's a few years ago for I think it was four dollars. Judas Priest, Rockarola. And Judas Priest, Sad Wings of Destiny. This is the repertoire CD that came out in the 90s. And it sounds really good. Of course, we got all the original Judas Priest albums because, once again, the remastered versions sound like shit. Are, are you noticing a pattern here? Now, this is the Japanese original version of uh, Priest in the East. You know, in North America, it was called Unleashed in the East. But in Japan, it was called Priest in the East. And it has some bonus tracks like Starbreaker. Not a particularly well-mixed live album, but it's fun nonetheless. Continuing with Juice Priest, and of course we have the Ripper albums, which some people don't like them. I think Jugulator is pretty amazing, pretty heavy. They went in a nice, different direction. Which, it's weird because Halford sometimes says, Oh, well, Juice Priest weren't going in the direction that I was wanting to go musically. I wanted to go heavier. And then he goes to release Fight. But then Judas Priest released Jugulator, so, you know, there's there's got to be something else. You know, I, I guess they just didn't get along or something. Let's see, then there's Killing Joke. Now, this is a band that I wish that I got into when I was younger because I discovered these guys 
uh, sometime in the past year, and I can't really get enough of them. So, I have every album up to um, Absolute Descent. This one's fucking awesome. This one's got Martin Atkins, which, of course, I like him because he was in ministry, but... This album right here, Pandemonium, this album fucked my shit up. This this is insane. <laughs> Just so much energy. And and the fact that they recorded the vocals inside of a fucking pyramid, it's... Ugh. See, Democracy, that's a pretty underrated album by them. Uh, the self-titled 2003 album, this has Dave Grohl on drums. And even the new stuff is pretty good. I like Hosanna's, that's an excellent album. And the singles collection, this is the 3DS version that has some movie soundtrack songs as well as some remixes. Um, it's an excellent set, however, it is packaged quite shittily. Okay, so three discs, and they're all kind of... That's, that's a mess. I mean, look at that. I mean, you have no choice but to rub the disc against the cardboard. King Diamond got the remastered versions of The Graveyard and Spire's Lullaby. Love some King Diamond and Voodoo, of course. Quite an underrated album. And we got some Kiss. Oh, yeah. Hotter than hell. Hard to beat. Rock and Roll Over. Love Gun. And this Kiss album actually comes with some tattoos. Mmm. I love that. All right. We are on panel three now. Continuing with Kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Got an original Unmasked, and then we have some remastered stuff like Lick It Up and Asylum. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, the 97 Kiss remasters I think sound better than the original CDs because with the 70s albums in particular, I have heard the occasional audio dropout, which doesn't ruin the experience for me, but with the 97 ones, I feel like you get a higher resolution. And then, of course, you have Han the Shade, which I fucking hate this album. I hate this album with a passion, but... It has forever. One good song on the whole album, and I think I paid $3 for it, price appropriately. I wouldn't have wanted to pay three cents for it, but there you go. And of course, we got KMFDM, Kill Motherfucking Depeche Mode. <laughs> That's not what that actually means, but I have every album up to Adios, and then there's Opium 1984, which is a mostly re-recorded version of the demos before the first album. See, then there's Attack. And then there's Extra Volume 1, which has some of the 12 inch mixes and some of the remix versions of their Wax Track singles. Uh, fun story I actually cage danced to one of these songs at Goth Night on New Year's Eve. The place went crazy. Um, <laughs> creator Coma of Souls. This is an original version, classic creator album. And then there's Violent Revolution. And the seller for this one sent me a note. Thanks so much for your purchase. Play this fucker loud. Brandon. More creator, there's Gods of Violence, which I have the flag poster hanging up on my wall, so gotta have the album. Um, a fan was nice enough to send me this splat metal album right here. Sons of Caius. Whether or not this is a bootleg remains to be seen, but love me some Caius. One of my favorite bands. Excellent driving music, too. Continuing, we have most of the L7 albums. We have Lacuna Coil, Christina Scabia, my girl. Mm. I was supposed to see them last summer, and then I got COVID. I already had the tickets for that, too. I tried giving the tickets away, and nobody wanted them. But fuck all of you, then. <laughs> Let's see, we've got Delirium, which... Kinda sucks, but this was given to me for free, so I can't complain too much. Let's see, there's Lard, Al Jorgensen, and Jello Biafra. How can you go wrong? Mm. The Ministry side projects back in the 80s and 90s were so fucking good. And speaking of which, there's Lead into Gold. Paul Barker's side project. Life is a tale told by an idiot. Mm. Gonna be seeing Lead into Gold open for Skinny Puppy pretty soon. Let's see, and then of course there's Legendary Pink Dots. They've had a million albums, and these are four of them, which again, were given to me for free. Um, I enjoyed these albums more than I expected to enjoy them, even though it's not really my type of music, but hey. That's, that's a nice thing about listening to music sometimes, is you get to discover stuff that you didn't think you'd like. Life of Agony, I found this album at a library sale for a dollar. Um, let's see... Dream Theater Side Projects. 
London After Midnight. Take me, take me in your arms, my love, and rape me. Uh, no, don't actually do that, please. That would hurt. <laughs> Let's see. Lords of Acid, one of my favorite bands. And this album, Far Stucker, is actually the fifth copy of this album that I've ever owned. Okay, so little behind the scenes story about me owning Farstucker. For some reason, this album's cursed. Every used copy of this album that I find is just scratched up, fucked up, messed up, skips, whatever. The first CD copy I ever owned skipped. And so I bought the vinyl, which was an original pressing, and that was pretty nice, but I sold a lot of my records, so that went away. The original CD went away, and I rebought a mint copy. And that was my third copy. Well, it, it was nice and mint for a while. And then a friend of mine came over and ripped the CD into her CD player. And then the fucking CD player ate the disc. Yeah, so had to rebuy it. And the fucking seller lied to me when they said it was a mint copy. And that was a little scratched up. So I gave it to her since she wanted it anyway. And this, this is it. This is my fifth copy. It's mint. I need to really just put this behind fucking laser security or something because I don't know what it is about this album, but it's cursed. <laughs> Continuing with Lords of Acid, we have Deep Chills, which is all right. Um, it's not as shocking, I suppose, as some of the earlier albums, but it was it, it's a different world, you know. Let's see, we've got the live album, Tales from Debauchery, which was sent without a jewel case by the band, and I happen to have a box full of jewel cases, so I put one in here. Uh, let's see, Lost Highway, one of the best movie soundtracks of the 1990s, and it has probably the greatest song ever made, The Perfect Drug by Nine Inch Nails. Love that stuff. La Stravi. I miss this band. When I saw them, nobody knew that it was going to be their last tour. Magazine. Uh, you know the ministry song, The Light Pours Out of Me? Well, this is where it came from. And we've got Marilyn Manson. Oh, yes, sweet dreams. <laughs> Massacre from beyond. They're, they're a bunch of whiny crybabies, but this album's really good. Like I, I feel like I would like this album better if I didn't know how those guys were in real life. Just so much drama. Let's see, Massive Attack. A friend of mine actually recommended this album to me because he said, Oh, all the women in my life love this album. I, I think he was trying to give me a hint. Um, <laughs> again, not really my music, but it has Liz Fraser of the Cocteau Twins and... Yeah, it, I don't know, this this has a nice masculine energy, I suppose, even though it's real low-key and down-tempo. Let's see, Mayhem, of course, the true Mayhem. And I was talking about KMFDM earlier, well, how about MDFMK, which is KMFDM backwards? This was basically Sasha and Lucia's band, and I believe Tim Skold was part of this. This is a really good album. I was able to find it cheap, and it's definitely worth listening to if you like KMFDM. Let's see, Megadeth, all the originals. We got Killing Is My Business. This has these boots, Uncensored. Of course, the original version of Peace Sells, but who's buying? The original version of So Far, So Good, So What, with its awful snare drum sound. That album definitely needed to be remixed, and it was, which it wouldn't have been so much of a problem if they didn't change the songs themselves, but hey. Let's see, Russ in Peace, the original mix. <sighs> yep, again with Megadeth. For the most part, the original mixes are the way to go. And they, they even changed up the sounds on Cryptic Writings, which it didn't need because Cryptic Writings was produced well to begin with. Continuing the M's, we have The Melvins. I've seen The Melvins three times. Houdini is a badass album. Uh, personally, Stoner Witch might be my personal favorite. Excellent stuff. There's also The Maggot, which every song is split into two parts for some weird reason. I guess they wanted to make the album as unlistenable as humanly possible. <laughs> Memoriam, The Silent Vigil. I'm indifferent towards this album and this band, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I miss Bolt Thrower, but I'm sorry. This band just doesn't really do much for me. Then we got The Mentors, which is the world's <laughs> most trolling band, probably. They're, <laughs> they're fucking stupid. And then we got The Mentors to the Max. When you're horny, you're horny. <laughs> El Duce. 
We need El Duce now more than ever. Hey, all you sluts out there. <laughs> Let's see. Merciful Fate, original pressings. Curse of the Pharaohs. Let's see. Return of the Vampire. Odd artwork. And then we got nine, which I don't really like very much, but... See, everybody's favorite band for some reason, Metallica. We got Midnight, Complete and Total Hell, Shocks of Violence. I have an autographed vinyl copy on my shelf over there. See, we got Mind Rot. Mm, I love this band. Now, this band is underrated. And then, of course, we've got Minister, one of the greatest bands of all time. I will die by that sentiment. The mind is a terrible thing to taste. And, of course... Filth Pig. Ministry, in case you didn't feel like showing up. Psalm 69, Filth Pig, Dark Side of the Spoon, Greatest Fits. This still has the sticker on it. I, I love when albums come with the stickers. It's, you know, it's, it's part of the history of the album. Sure, you can replace the jewel case and, you know, nothing will really change but the stickers. Uh, something I like to do is I like to keep the stickers of the albums if they come with them. Like this album right here. There's a sticker in the wrapping, so I cut that out and I put it under the jewel case. Has a lenticular cover with George Bush morphing into a lizard. Kind of like he probably did in real life. <laughs> Mastery, Americant, not really a fan of this album. I do like the way it's produced, though. Uh, Miranda Sex Garden. Yeah, strange album cover, but, you know, they're a pretty good band. And I got this album for free. And we got the Misfits. Yes. Uh, Walk Among Us was not part of the coffin box set, unfortunately, so had to buy it separately. Of course, there are the Graves albums, like Famous Monsters. This one comes with a bonus track. And there's Cuts from the Crypt, which features that bonus track, as well as a few demos and some movie stuff. And the bootlegged version of 12 Hits from Hell, I have sold my retail version of 12 Hits ever since the last video because, well, I just, I didn't need it. You know, I didn't want something that was $200 hanging on my wall. <laughs> See, we got the original Monster Magnet, Spine of God. I love this album. Really love this album. Ozium, Nod Scene, uh, Sin is a Good Man's Brother. <clears throat> good stuff. Let's see, Dopes to Infinity, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. And we have the full dynamic range version of Morbid Angels, Ostras of Madness with the infamous close-up artwork. What were they thinking? Continuing Morbid Angel, there is Covenant, one of the greatest death metal albums of all time, in my opinion, and one of the best-selling. There's Motley Crue's self-titled album, which is pretty solid. I know a lot of people don't like it because Vince Neil's not on there, but... You know, if you don't want to hear a lot of high-pitched whining like this, then this album's for you. John Carabas sounds like this. No, he doesn't. What? Sorry. Okay, and we got the majority of the Motorhead catalog. I have every album, including a couple of live albums. The only two that I'm missing currently are Motorizer and The World Is Yours, which I am slowly pacing myself on completing the collection because here's the thing about Motorhead. I love them to death, but every album after you've heard about 10 of them, start to sound exactly the same. <laughs> same soup, different bowl. It's kind of like ACDC. Remember that Angus Young interview where he was talking about, you know, I'm sick to death of people saying that we have 11 albums that sound exactly the same. No, in fact, we have 12 albums that sound exactly the same. <laughs> uh, one thing I will note is that if you're going to buy Inferno, try to buy an original mix, uh, sorry, original pressing, because... Uh, the repress that came out in the past couple of years has a glitch in one of the songs, and the 2004 version does not have that. One of Motorhead's better albums. Excellent stuff. Uh, Kiss of Death is also pretty underrated. And I might as well mention Seriously Bad Magic, which is the final Motorhead album, Bad Magic, but it has two extra songs that were recorded during those sessions that were not on the original album. Continuing the M's, Municipal Waste is going to fuck you up. Municipal Waste, Slime and Punishment. Awesome album. Uh, personally, I think Electrified Brain is a little better, but hey. See, My Dying Bride, Trinity. One of my favorite My Dying Bride albums right here, which technically isn't an album. It's a collection, but uh, Turn Loose the Swans, that's awesome. Awesome death doom metal, whatever you want to categorize them as. I now need The Angel in the Dark River. Because that album is just <clears throat> beautiful to listen to. 
My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult. Hard band to beat. I love the Thrill Kill Cult. Hopefully I get to see them live soon. I had the chance to see them live a couple of years ago, and for some reason I passed on it. 13 Above the Night. This is the one that has Blue Buddha. Mm, that's a sexy song. That's my theme song right there. <laughs> Hit and Run Holiday, which was underrated. I don't see this one get talked about as much, but it's a really good album. Nail Bomb. Mm, Max Cavalera's side project before he left Sepultura. And honestly, I think this is better than some of the Sepultura stuff. Just full of angst, full of anger, and it's just... Mm. Nobody talks about this project enough, and it's so good. Let's see, Napalm Death, Scum, From Enslavement to Obliteration, Fear, Emptiness, Despair. Mm, this is the one that's got Twist the Knife and Hung and Plague Rages. So many good songs. And some of these songs, one of these songs at least ended up on the Mortal Kombat soundtrack in the 1990s. Nashville Pussy, I love that artwork. And we have the Nativity in Black tribute albums for Black Sabbath. Uh, the red one, Nativity in Black 2, is a little hard to find. And one day I would like to do a video on both of these albums. Uh, this one I think is the superior of the two, but you know what? System of Down's version of Snowblind is actually pretty good. They made it sound like a System of a Down song, which is the sign of a great cover. Nausea, Extinction, The Second Coming. I paid $50 for this, and it sounds excellent. And the reason I got this instead of the punk terrorist anthologies is because those albums are missing a couple songs, and the songs are out of order. What the fuck? Whoever designed those albums, they they dropped the ball, man. Necrot? Mmm. Mmm. Excellent death metal. You you know your band is good when Jeff Becerra of Possessed endorses you. <laughs> Let's see, New Order, Substance, which has the full LP mixes of many of their singles, but the singles compilation, which this is the one that got re-released. The original one was Brickwalled, but this is the re-released one that actually sounds better. Nigel Peppercock. I think the cover speaks for itself. We've got Nightwish. We have Angels Fall First, which is their first album before they really found their sound. And then, of course, there's Oceanborn, which was even better than that. Yeah, one of my best friends got me into Nightwish, so I collected pretty much all the albums. I don't have any of the side projects, but that may change at some point. Once is probably my favorite Nightwish album at the moment. It, it, it depends on the day. It's usually between that and uh, Century Child. Which, Floor is personally my favorite Nightwish singer, though I feel like the albums with Tarja are the best albums they've done. Of course, um, you know, Annette does a really good job on Dark Passion Play, and I feel like she does wonderful on Imaginarum. Love that album. Got the tour edition of Endless Forms Most Beautiful. We were here. Great, I'm going to start crying now. <laughs> Human Nature, which I think kind of sucks but maybe my opinion will change one day maybe i just haven't listened to it enough i don't know it was just the first album that didn't really do it for me uh the nihilist demos fucking raw as hell mm. Mm. yes now they just have to re-release the dismember demos and we got some nile there's nile what the fuck <laughs> uh, funny thing is i found most of these albums at mckay's which was where I was when I shot that video. And I said, what, there's no Nile? What the fuck? Uh, the only one that I didn't find in McKay's was this Japanese pressing of Annihilation of the Wicked, which has a bonus song that is honestly not worth the extra money to get. But, hey, such a badass album cover. <clears throat> Somebody needs to get that tattooed. If they haven't already. And of course we got Nine Inch Nails. Uh, one of my top three favorite bands of all time. And I've never owned a physical copy of Fixed. But I've changed that in the last few months. And I'm happy about it. The Downward Spiral. One of the best albums ever made. And we have a remix album for The Downward Spiral. Which is called Further Down the Spiral. This is the North American version. I know that the European version has a slightly different track listing. Maybe I'll get that someday. Uh, the Fragile, another one of the greatest albums ever. And the remix album for that, Things Falling Apart. This one still has the sticker. Uh, sometimes people shed all over this, but it's pretty good. 
people say, oh, well, there are three versions of Starfuckers on there. Yeah, but there are multiple versions of Mr. Self-Destruct on this album. So, you know, it's not really a fair criticism, if you ask me. Continuing with Nine Inch Nails, we have my favorite live album of all time, and all that could have been. This also is the special edition that comes with a second disc called Still, which is mostly acoustic versions or piano versions of Nine Inch Nails songs, like The Becoming, The Day the World Went Away, something I can never have. We have the UK version of With Teeth, which comes with a couple bonus tracks, which wasn't that difficult to find, to be honest with you. We got Year Zero. Mm, I didn't like this album when I first heard it. Now I love it. And this came with a fun little sticker on the back of it that some people took way too seriously when they shouldn't have. There is no Bureau of Morality. It's fictional. It doesn't exist. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> Ghosts 1 through 4 and The Slip. Of course, that was an exciting time to be a fan of the band because... They gave the slip away for free as a MP3 download, and they gave the first part of Ghosts away for free. Hesitation Marks, it's been almost 10 years, and I still don't really like that album. Then there's the trilogy, not the actual events, Ad Violence and Bad Witch. Some people don't like Bad Witch. I think it's great. I, I don't know. Just Some people just don't like stuff for weird reasons. Nirvana 2002, excellent Swedish death metal right here. <clears throat> Nice chainsaw guitar sound. Oasis! Definitely, maybe. Was the story Morning Glory? Uh, they're a bit on the arrogant side. That's kind of an understatement, but... <laughs> you know, those those two albums are pretty good. Let's see, we got Inked in Blood by... Obituary! <laughs> yeah, do my John Tardy impression right up against the microphone. Got the self-titled album, which hasn't even been opened yet. Uh, Dissonance Productions has been putting out some reissues of Deicide. Uh, hopefully they can also get to the older Obituary albums, because those are getting to be a little hard to find. Let's see, we've got Ogre. Yeah. Water. Good stuff. And then, of course, we've got Origin. Look, if you like death metal, Origin, I feel like, are the unsung heroes of modern death metal. And even after being together for so many years, they're still full of rage. Chaosmos, the latest album. So good. So good. Man, I, I can't wait to see them live again. Let's see, we've got Ozzy Osbourne, the original pressings of Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Madman, The Ultimate Sin, which is pretty underrated, and Osmosis, which I only really like the first half of the album, but whatever. Great Southern Trend Kill, my favorite Pantera album. Actually, I want to do a video one day on why the Great Southern Trend Kill is their best album. See how many arguments I can get into, because the Pantera fan base, they're, they're a bit of a volatile bunch. <laughs> Let's see, Paul Leary, The History of Dogs, this album... Uh, I don't know about those vocals. Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost gothic ooh, now that's a good album and then we got some pentagram heaviest show i ever saw so yeah had to buy some of the cds we got before warned which is my favorite we got review your choices first days here forever my queen the original version of pig destroyers prowler in the yard because the remastered version is missing one of the songs damn it Pig Destroyer, Book Burner, which this is the special edition. Check this out. This is actually a mini CD right here, which was expanded to a full disc. Pig Face, Gub. Nice collective with a whole bunch of different people from the industrial scene. And has the original version of Suck by Nine Inch Nails. If you've never heard the original, go listen to it. It's pretty awesome. It, it's minimal, and it's creepy. Okay, we are on the fourth and final panel, and I have a Mountain Dew next to me, so things should run rather smoothly, wouldn't you say? <laughs> we got some Pink Floyd to start us out. Wish You Were Here, The Wall, The Final Cut. Mm -mm. Classic albums. The Final Cut is a little underrated. Uh, personally, I like Momentary Lapse of Reason and Division Bell quite a bit as well. I just don't have those in my collection yet. Of course, we also got some Pixies. Love some Pixies. I know a guy who did a photo book on the Pixies, and 
it's a pretty awesome photo book, even though it's not in print anymore. My personal favorite Pixies album might be this one, even though Kim Deal isn't on this album very much, and that's quite unfortunate. Pixies at the BBC, and the Purple Tape, which is pretty much outtakes of stuff that didn't make Come On Pilgrim. Population reduction, bringing it back to the beginning, the roots of my path into metal. This was the band. Oh, yeah. And of course, we got some fucking Portal. Mmm. Love me some Portal. Nice, obscure, harsh metal. And as long as we're talking about the beginnings of metals, how about the beginning of death metals? <laughs> now, it's debatable what the first death metal album of all time might be. This is one of the candidates for it, and it's good. Although, personally, I prefer the Eyes of Horror EP, which is featured as bonus tracks on this version of Beyond the Gates. And then, of course, there's the newer Possessed album, which is pretty good. We got some Prick. Mmm. That, that song, Animal, that's a sexy song. We got some Primus. Suck on this. The live album that was recorded on a VHS tape for, what was it, $3,000? Something like that. The Project Hate, 1998, which has Joe Bench, a bolt thrower, on there. Yeah. Some Pygmy Children. Uh, that fan who sent me the Lacuna Coil and Fetus albums. Uh, sent me this one as well. And we got some Queens of the Stone Age, some Quotza, original artwork, Songs for the Deaf, one of my favorite rock albums, excellent driving music. I got that album for Christmas one year. Then we got Lullabies to Paralyze. It's got a bunch of guests on this album, like Jack Black and, you know, the people from ZZ Top. Now I just need Era Vulgaris. Okay. We got um, Over the Years and Through the Woods, which is the live album. Got villains and then we got queensrike again original pressings because you guessed it the remastered versions sound like crap why don't we continue with queensrike the reich of queens operation mind crime oh masterpiece i don't believe in love empire hmm uh, there are a few really good songs on here. I think, as a whole, this album hasn't really aged all that well. You know, you know, one of the things about old albums sometimes is when they have lyrics such as Waiting by the phone for you. Waiting by the phone? You can tell that was written in the early 1990s. It, waiting by the phone? Just keep it in your pocket. <laughs> a lot of people say that Promised Land is the last good Queensryche album, and I think I'd like to concur with them. Because they started going grunge for a while, and then they started releasing really bad albums. Really bad. Okay, and then we got some Rammstein. You gotta say it like the Germans would say it. Rammstein. This is the alternate cover, not the cover that they originally picked. Buck dick. Dana, dana, bana, bana. Yeah, I've, I've heard Du Hast at Goth Night every once in a while, and instead of dancing, I just start headbanging. It's pretty awesome. Then we got Teresa, Teresa. I think that's how you pronounce it. And then we got this one. Liebe ist für allen da. I'm, I'm bad with German, okay? I can speak. I can't speak German, but I can if you like. Ow. Let's see. Zeit. You know, I was going to go... Um, See the immersive Dolby Atmos uh, showing in the movie theater in Atlanta for this. And the reason I didn't go was because the Google reviews said that that theater was real nasty. It's a real nasty hoe theater. <laughs> it's probably got AIDS. Now, you want to see a waste of packaging? Now, this is packaged in a DVD case. And everything comes in, like, these little folding out things. And you might think that, oh, this is going to come with bonus tracks, right? No, no, not at all. It's just the standard album, and there's no real reason to own this shit and thing. It's a waste of space. I mean, they could have put some of these special photos in the standard version, which they probably did anyway. I don't know. I mean, the only reason I got this one was because it was cheaper than the standard version. It was a waste of space because I could have put it right here. And then, of course, we've got the Ramones. Yes, one of my all-time favorite bands. Oh, yeah, hard to beat the Ramones. And, you know, the thing about the Ramones is once you learn the lyrics, you kind of never forget them. Now, one thing I have to note that the album It's Alive, it's pretty good, but I feel like the other live album is even better. 
Why? Well, um, it was recorded in New York City, where they're from, and so the vibe and the atmosphere are a little better. And I've always suspected that there was some kind of studio fixing going on with It's Alive, and this is just straight off the soundboard. It's full of energy, the sound quality is great for what it is, and it pretty much has the same track listing, uh, plus or minus one of the songs, I can't remember. Um, and it's much better than Greatest Hits Live, which is pretty much a cash grab because the band was already broken up by that point, I think. And there aren't that many songs, you know? Like, most of the Ramones live albums have like 30 songs on them. This only has 16 and two studio tracks as bonus tracks. Man, what a load of shit. <laughs> Okay, and then we got Ravenous, which is an autopsy side project, courtesy of the Metalhead Box. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. And then we got R.E.M., probably getting stalked by the butthole surfers around this time. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I found this at McKay's for a dollar. So, and Losing My Religion is just a nice, jangly rock track. Then we got Repulsion, Horrified. Bow, 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 bow. We've got the Revolting Cox. I have one of those. Yep, Big Sexy Land, Classic Industrial, Live, You Goddamned Son of a Bitch. I also had the DVD for this. Maybe I'll get to the DVDs in a few minutes. We got Linger Fickin' Good, the final album with a classic lineup, of course. You know, we're talking about uh, Bill Rieflin and Paul Barker and Dwayne and Mike Scotia and all those lovely people. Speaking of Mike Scotia, we got Rigor Mortis. Mm <clears throat> The only album by them that truly matters. What a ripper. We got Ripping Corpse. Speaking of rippers. <laughs> we were talking about Ripper Owens earlier. Now we're talking about um, yeah, this. We got Roger Waters. The pros and cons of hitchhiking. The censored cover. That's a butt. <laughs> and as I've been getting into goth music since last summer, we got Rosetta Stone in this ridiculously overstuffed box set. Only half of these discs are actual Rosetta Stone discs. And then the second half is Misery Lab, which is Porl's uh, project after disbanding Rosetta Stone. I only wanted the first disc. <laughs> An eye for the main chance. Awesome. Awesome album. Um, but you know what? I actually really enjoyed some of these songs on here. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's it's a little overstuffed, and it was a good price. Actually, it was it was cheaper to buy this whole box set than it was to buy an eye for the main chance on its own. <laughs> Been getting pretty big into Rush over the last couple of years. Um, they're a band that I wish that I'd gone into when I was younger because I started listening to them and I felt pretty moved by them. You know, Farewell to Kings, just perfect album. Now the thing about Rush is some people don't like their synthesizer era. Um, I guess it technically began with moving pictures because there were synthesizers on that um but mainly a lot of people refer to signals as the beginning and that is a pretty solid album i would say um i actually really like grace under pressure this is the one about the cold war and the reagan era i suppose and as cheesy as it is power windows it's it's insanely cheesy, but it's it's so fun to listen to. <laughs> then he got Hold Your Fire, which has Time Stand Still, which kind of makes me cry, but <laughs> that's probably the only great song on the album. Now, this right here is cool. It's a seven-CD box set with all of their albums from 1989 to 2007, and it has the remixed version of Vapor Trails. Now, weird thing when I bought this, the first copy that I had of this box set, it had two copies of Vapor Trails. And it was missing one of the other albums. Um, well, obviously, one copy is all I need, so I had to send it back and buy another one. Had to buy it used, and I asked the seller to make sure that I was getting all the albums that I was supposed to get. And then, of course, there's Clockwork Angels, their final album. Fucking awesome. You know, it's really awesome that Rush can release such a good album so late in their career. And and the thing about Rush fans is they're not just interested in the old stuff, like moving pictures and signals. No, they like the new stuff too. Snakes and Arrows and Vapor Trails, those types of albums. We got this little Skinny Puppy side project, or post-Skinny Puppy project with Ogre and Martin Atkins. Mm, that's actually really good. Then we got Sam Hain doing my best dancing impression. Yeah, we got Black Dream, the bootleg. It's got a tape dub of Unholy Passion, and it's got some live tracks. 
Here are my bricks, motherfuckers! <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got some Satyricon. This is Armageddon! I need more of their stuff in my collection. We got SFW, which the only reason I have this in my collection is because there's a really obscure Guar song on here that honestly kind of sucks, but okay. It's Japanese pressing of Siege Drop Dead. Mm -hmm. It's basically the definitive version of this album. Classic album. Classic, classic, classic. And we got some more sexy music, like Sister Machine Gun. Good uh, industrial stuff from the 90s. And the cool thing about this album is there's a pre-recording. So, if you start on track one and rewind it about four and a half minutes, I guess, um, there's a cover of Strange Days by The Doors. Oh, yeah, let's see. And then we got some Susie and the Banshees. These are original pressings. Because I've heard people complain about the remastered versions, and I didn't want to get burned. But, let's see, you got the Scream, awesome stuff. <clears throat> Just so many great songs by this band, and it's unfortunate that they didn't get terribly big in North America, because the songs are really good. Of course, I also have Once Upon a Time, because there are songs on this album that are not on any of the studio albums. You know, like Hong Kong Garden and, um, yeah, let's see, Juju, excellent stuff. And, and these all sound wonderful, by the way. Actually, some of these were a pain in the ass to find, like this one I had to buy internationally. I think I paid $35 for it. This one I had to buy from Canada, again, $35. Tinderbox, classic, solid album all the way through. It's nice how their sound changed over the years and... Uh, this one, Through the Looking Glass, it's a covers album. And the candidate for the hardest-to-read CD spine ever goes to Peep Show by Susie and the Banshees. But it's not just the spine that's hard to read. Like, yeah, the title of the album is supposed to be over here. But also... Look at that. It's pretty hard to read the track listing, too. Imagine trying to listen to this in a car at night. And you're asking your passenger next to you, hey, what song are we playing right now? And, and they, they have the light on, and they're trying to look, and they, they can't see anything. Ugh. Then, of course, there are the next two albums she did, Superstition and The Rapture, which debatably aren't as good as the other stuff. But then there's Twice Upon a Time, which has a couple of unreleased tracks. And while we're talking about goth stuff, Sisters of Mercy. All the albums, remastered, they sound fantastic. And they have bonus tracks as well. I need all the love that I can get to. Okay, then we release two albums with kind of the same artwork. And the only reason you would own this one is for the 1992 edition of Temple of Love. Great, I'm going to start singing that now. The Temple of Love. <laughs> And then we got Sisters of Suffocation. I'm talking like this because, you know, they are a Dutch death metal band and they are really good. Emily's going to kill me. <laughs> okay, Eradication, the album of their career. I think it's a concept album. Go check it out if you like death metal. Really fucking gnarly, dude. Then we got the Skate Nigs, who opened up for Minister on the Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste Tour. This album came with a condom. Stupid People Shouldn't Breathe. That's the name of the album. And they put that on the condom, too. This condom hasn't been used, so that must mean that the person who owned it before me was breeding. Ugh. Okay, Skid Row. Slave to the Grind, which is uncensored. It has Get the Fuck Out. Get the Fuck Out! And then we got one of the greatest bands of all time, Skinny Puppy. And speaking of Skinny Puppy, we have a cassette for the process. Could this be for a video on the process that's coming sometime this year? Back and Forth, Volume 3, the European edition, which has Left Handshake, which is not available on the American version because of copyright reasons, but they were able to get away with it in Europe. While we were talking about Skinny Puppy, Doomsday. I didn't have this for many years, but it's a live album, their reformation show in 2000, and the sound quality is awesome. Basically, all it is is uh, Kevin's playing the drums, Ogre's singing, and the rest of the music is just played with tracks. And the band seems to be having the time of their lives, and it sounds really good. 
So yeah, that list is really nice. Uh, the only thing is, um, a couple of the songs that they played at the festival didn't make the CD for copyright reasons and space reasons. Uh, but you can find the concert on YouTube. Then there's the post-reformation stuff, like Weapon. I've always liked the artwork for Weapon. <clears throat> Lovely. And we got Screw. If you like Minister, you'll like Screw. Especially since Al Jorgensen produced this album. Sleep, Dope Smoker. <clears throat> Classic stuff. And then we've got Fucking Slayer. Uh, we do have the Japanese version of this album, which has a couple of extra songs. <clears throat> Payback's a bitch, motherfucker. But yeah, every Slayer album, Live Undead and Haunting the Chapel, all in the same package. And the packaging here is really nice. Look at that. It folds out. Mm. So good. And then we got the Smashing Pumpkins and the albums Gash and Billy Corgan and the door. Okay, you like my Billy Corgan impression? You know, a lot of people shed all over this album, but you know what? I like it. The only complaint I have is it needed one good solid rocker. Like, the end is the beginning is the end. If that song had been on this album, it would have sold a lot more. It's a fucking badass song. I think Billy Corgan thought that he was writing a badass song for a badass Batman movie. And then he saw the movie and probably went, What the fuck? <laughs> and we're continuing with the pumpkins that are smashing. Hi, I'm Billy Corgan, Smashing Pumpkins. Hey, I'm Homer Simpson, Smiling Politely. I actually really like this album. The song Standing Inside Your Love. Mm, so good. Let's see. Songs of the Witchblade. Now, this is a soundtrack to a comic book, and this has Peter Steele singing a couple of songs. Mm. Yeah. You can feel the steel with this one. And we got Son of Sam, which has members of Sam Hain. Mm. And we got Spinal Tap. How much more black can you get? The answer is none. Not more black. And we got the second album, Break Like the Wind. <laughs> Get it? And we got Back from the Dead, which has some of the best CD packaging that I've ever seen. And we got Steel Panther. Mm, very immature music, but funny. Come on, pretty baby, suck my balls all night. <laughs> and we got the Stooges. Not Shem Howard. I'm talking about the punk band, the Stooges. You know, with albums like Funhouse. Now that's a good album. And we got Stormcrow. Mmm. Excellent. Crusty metal. Mmm. Go check out Stormcrow. That, I wish that band would get back together. They were so good. And we got Stormtroopers of Death. With Scott Ian of Anthrax. And we've got Surgical Meth Machine, another minister side project. And, uh-oh, the goth sides have come out again. We've got Suspiria, Dance Floor Tragedy. This fucking thing costs a fortune on Discogs. But, fortunately, <laughs> get it? I got it for free. That just rhymed. Allegedly, Dance Floor Tragedy. And we got Swallow the Sun. I love Swallow the Sun. Saw this album in McKay's. Now, this is a three-disc album, and I thought I was going to get tired of it as I was listening to it because it's so long, but believe it or not, the more it went along, the more I enjoyed it. I didn't really want it to end by disc three, so, hey. And we got the Swans. Mm -hmm. I gotta get more of them. And we got Switchblade Symphony. Switchblade. I don't have one of those. Okay, so they have had three albums, and they have a live album that I don't have yet. I'm going to be honest with you, though. The only album that I enjoyed all the way through was this one, Serpentine Gallery. And then there are these two, which have good songs on them, but mainly they're just, I don't know, they're too different, I guess. And then we got The Talking Heads. Mm -mm. Good stuff. Remain in Light. One of Trent Reznor's favorite albums of all time. Uh, there's a guitar solo. Well, there are two guitar solos on... The Great Curve. And they are... Oh, I, I'm at a loss for words. I even have some of the later Talking Heads albums, like Little Creatures and Naked, which both kind of suck. I feel like after Stop Making Sense, they kind of ran out of ideas. Got this crazy fucker Ted Nugent. 
I don't even know why that's in my collection. I, I don't know. He's, he, he's got good guitar tone, okay? Then we got Terrorizer. One of the best albums ever made. I can pop this fucker in any day, and it'll make me go batshit crazy. Trust me. This album made me want to become a better drummer. And I still can't really keep up. Then we got Before the Downfall, which has one unreleased track from the World Downfall Sessions. And it also has some of their demos and some of their rehearsals. Mm -mm. Every bit is important as World Downfall. So if you haven't heard it, maybe you should do that. Got some Testament, The Ritual. Got Fear of Tragedy, the album with the boobies. Mm -mm. Some nice ones, too. We got some Thin Lizzy the first vinyl album that I ever owned, and I have it on CD now. And we've got some Tool. I did a whole video on this where I used the LED screen to time travel. Hey, it's still charged from the last person I sent it to. Okay, I don't have any desire to time travel today, so I'm gonna put this back. Uh, we've got Throbbing Gristle, one of the first, well, no, the first industrial band ever. It's hard to listen to, it's not for everybody, but you get these albums like 20 Jazz Funk Greats, and when you look at the cover, you think it's nice and innocent, and you're going to get lovely, sweet, family-friendly music, but <laughs> first of all, the title itself is a prank, because there are only 11 songs on the album, get it, 20 Jazz Funk Greats, 11 songs, and this is a suicide cliff that they took this picture on. <laughs> My goodness. I also like Coil a bit, too, but I don't have any of their stuff here. Oh, almost skipped over the This Comp Kills Fascist volumes, released by Relapse. Mm -mm. Lots of good grindcore and power violence and great stuff here. Apartment 213, Population Reduction, Vote Sack, Despise You, mm -mm. Brutal Truth. We got Beyond Life with Timothy Leary, which has... Yet another Minister song from the Filth Pig Sessions that actually kind of sucks, but okay. I, I guess they had to release it somewhere. Then we got some Tool, you know, need some wine for my polyrhythms. We got Opiate, we've got Lateralis, we got 10,000 Days with the 3D glasses that are kind of a pain in the ass to figure out how to use, but once you do figure out how to use them with the artworks, it's pretty magical, so... We got Tori Amos, which sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, we got two copies of Boys for Pele because one version has a radio mix of one of the songs and one version does not. I hate when they switch those out. And continuing with Tori Amos, we've got From the Choir Girl Hotel. You know, I saw Tori Amos a few years ago, and I stuck out like a sore thumb in that crowd. Everybody was old and wearing lipstick and hoop earrings and... I was wearing my leather jacket and my Morbid Angel shirt, had my long hair down, and, uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> hey, but she put on an excellent show. The crowd was excellent. Enjoyed the night. And then, of course, there's Psalm 9 by Trouble. Awesome American doom metal. And we've got Manic Frustration. I love this album. It's wonderful. And we've got Twisted Sister. Under the Blade. It's a special edition that comes with a DVD. The fucked up thing is they they kind of censored out the uh, the F word and shoot them down. What? What? Then what's the point of the parental advisory sticker on the CD then, you fucking fuck nuggets? Okay, we got the remastered version of Stay Hungry, which doesn't really improve that much on the original because the original one didn't sound that great to begin with. We got a three-in-one album set with You Can't Stop Rock and Roll, Come Out and Play, and Love is for Suckers. The cheesiest 80s rock album ever, but man, it's good. <laughs> Just don't expect a Twisted Sister album, <laughs> okay? And then we got Typo Negative. Yes, we got Typo Negative with Peter Steele singing on it. We got the least worst of Typo Negative, which has some unreleased tracks and stuff, you know? I talked about it in my extended version of the Typo Negative video. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. We got Strangers in the Night by UFO, one of the best live albums ever. This is the original version with the original track listing that starts with Natural Thing, ends with Shoot Shoot, 13 songs. Beautiful music. Van Halen, of course, got the Japanese version of 5150 that actually sounds much better than the American version that I've been used to for many years. 
got some Velvet Acid Christ, and if you put the disc in the computer on the CD-ROM part of the disc, um, there are the demos that came out. The final shelf on the final panel. Isn't it heartbreaking? But fret not, because we have yet to get to the box sets. Okay, but we got Violence, the 2005 two-disc edition of Eternal Nightmare, though personally, I feel like Oppressing the Masses is a better album, and this one has Torture Tactics on it, too. Okay, we got some Voivod, mm -mm, underrated thrash metal, and we got some Vorbid, lovely, wonderful Vorbid. If you haven't heard them, you need to, especially this EP. So good. And there's the Mind album, which was not that great, but this album, mm, so wonderful. The vocal style fits the music, and they really worked hard on this. I'm proud of those guys. And what are we? What do we have here? More goth stuff. The Wake. Here it comes, another sideshow. Okay, I'll stop. We got some War Beast. Which Texas War Beast deliver their own unique brand of? <laughs> Remember that video? Where I joked about that. <laughs> And we got Watain. Mm, lovely, awesome Watain. The Agony and Ecstasy of Watain. Wonderful album. One of the best things they ever did. And you know what I like about CDs like this with the packaging? You know, you can just smell the new manufactured CD smell. You know what I'm talking about? We got White Zombie with this big ass parental advisory sticker. So big and exaggerated. As if they thought that people wouldn't notice. <laughs> Astro Creep 2000. You know, when I listen to White Zombie, though, it just makes me want to listen to Minister. Because Rob Zombie pretty much stole Al Jorgensen's look. We got Worm Your Rose, a friend of mine was in this band. Nice, um, folk slash doom slash experimental metal, I suppose. I don't know. It barely qualifies as metal. It, it, it has distorted guitars, but, you know, sticking feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken. Wonderful album, though. Then we got Wumpscott. Mm -mm. Classic. Classic album. We got some more Zymox when it was changing the band name from Clan of Zymox to just Zymox. We got X-Cops for all the Guar fans out there. Mm -mm. Those guys were so young. <laughs> Another album that sticks out. Why Can't Tori Read? She looks like a pirate hooker on this cover. <laughs> that 80s hair. I love it. We got the Young Gods. Mmm, look at these albums. David Bowie was inspired by these albums. And of course, we got 45 Grave. It's party time. And then we got this loose CD right here, which doesn't even count. It's Ramon's Mania, which I just play this in the car sometimes. A friend of mine gave this to me. Now for some box sets. Yes, boxes of sets. We're going to start with some tool. You know, you're going to need your wine for the polyrhythms. This is a DVD full of music videos as well as a disc of live tracks and uh, some covers like Led Zeppelin's No Quarter. Uh, very nice. Uh, a fan sold this to me for about $45 under the condition that I do a video review of it. Um, up until then, I'd never owned this album, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. Of course, there's the Misfits Coffin box set, which is a little bit of a mess as far as organization is concerned. Um, but it comes with a pen, there are four discs, and has most of the recordings that the Misfits have done. Except for Walk Among Us, because of copyright reasons, you had to buy that separately, but absolutely worth every penny. And then, of course, there's Sam Hain which is my favorite project that Danzig has done. This has every album, uh, as well as the re-recorded version of Unholy Passion. It doesn't have the original mix, but it comes with a comic book. It comes with a pen, which only came with the first thousand copies. And it comes with a VHS tape full of live stuff. Now that's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, this thing was $60 when it was brand new, and I think I paid $180 for it. Come on, Danzig, make these albums available again. People want them. There are probably more bootlegs available than legit copies. Uh, let's see, Cleopatra released this Ministry box set, which 
It's called the Tracks Box, and it has all of the Wax Tracks era ministry stuff, a bunch of unreleased songs, and it has some side projects as well, like Acid Horse, Palehead, uh, Revolting Cox, Pressuring the Psycho Drill, and it has all versions of Supernaut by 1000 Homo DJs. The Trent Reznor version, the Al Jorgensen version, basically any version you can think of of this song, it's on here. Uh, that version that song has been re-recorded many times by ministry as well so yeah let's see we got the alice cooper box set the life and crimes of alice cooper which this has most of his big hits up to that point this came out in 1999 and this also has some movie tracks if you remember the movie monster dog he sang two songs exclusive to the movie and um, there's some songs from his pre-Alice Cooper days. Uh, this is worth every penny. It's really nice. It's got four discs. It's got this awesome booklet. Mm-hmm. Can't go wrong with Alice Cooper. Look at that. He was so young. Whew. And I almost forgot to talk about the long boxes. Um, I already had a copy of Dead Again for the longest time, but Nuclear Blast reissued this with a second disc full of live stuff so i couldn't pass it up limited edition and i love typo negative so there we go then we have immolation acts of god mm, look at that artwork isn't it beautiful gorgeous and a, and a great album too you know immolation has never released a bad album unsung heroes of death metal then we got the lost tracks of danzig which is two discs full of Songs that didn't make a lot of the Danzig albums. Some of it's really good. Some of it you can understand why they were not on the albums. Okay, I said earlier that I might get to the DVDs. So here we are. Some of my DVDs and Blu-rays of the musical variety. Some of these are concert films. Some of these are mockumentaries like Spinal Tap here. We also have documentaries like The Decline of Western Civilization. I have all three movies on Blu-ray. Uh, there's this Autopsy DVD, Born Undead. It's very awesome. It's got some live footage of Autopsy. Mm -hmm. Some extra stuff. Uh, we got Skinny Puppy, Ain't It Dead Yet from 1987. There's Skinny Puppy, Ain't uh, The Greater Wrong of the Right live. Mm -hmm. After they got back together. Very awesome. Anything Skinny Puppy is good. We got Typo Negative, Symphony for the Devil, which comes with a bonus disc of a Santana cover. Typo Negative, After Dark. Uh, the Industrial Accident documentary about Wax Tracks Records, one of the best documentaries I've seen. We got a Ministry live video. We've got Ministry's The Fix documentary, which I'm kind of shocked that they released it as it was. Revolting Cox, live, you goddamn son of a bitch. Stop Making Sense, one of the greatest concert movies ever. I can't wait to see it in 4K later this year. Uh, Butthole Surfers, Blind Eyes See All. Blind Eyes Sees All, yeah. Awesome. Portis Head, now this sticks out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not really my music, but it's good for what it is. Now, strange trivia about this DVD. You see how it says it's live in New York? Well, the DVD... 100% live in New York, but the CD version of this album is recorded in three different places. Consistency? Huh? Let's see, we got two Lords of Acid DVDs, Praga Khan, Jade For You, Channel X. This one didn't really age that well, but it's signed by Praga. Uh, these DVDs were part of the Kickstarter campaign a few years ago when they were recording the Pretty and Kink album. Let's see, we got two Nine Inch Nails concert films, And All That Could Have Been, which is my favorite live album of all time. Uh, you put this DVD in the player, and if you play around with the remote a little bit, you can discover some Easter eggs, like some extra songs, uh, different camera angles, stuff like that. Beside You in Time with a different lineup. This time, Aaron North is on guitar. He's not quite Robin, but he brought a different presence to the band. And let's see, we've got Night Wish. We've got three different concert films. From Wishes to Eternity. Showtime story time. See, that's that's how Floor would say it. Beautiful renditions of these songs. Then we've got End of an Era, the rather tumultuous ending chapter of the first era of Night Wish. Yeah, these are a fine collection. But uh-oh, what is this? What is this right here? 
another package, another delivery. We got some more deliveries mid-production. Yes, we got another package while editing this video. My Jennifer Lopez CD showed up. Big, big booty, because you got a big booty. Nah, just playing. <laughs> we got three Deicide collections. Those Deicide collections I was talking about earlier, well, these are it. Hell yeah, this one, uh, Crucifixation, the early years. This has Legion, the self-titled, and Feasting the Beast with all the demos. Mmm. Packaging's fucking awesome, and of course, if you remove each disc, it shows you the artwork for each one. Um, there are booklets for each of these collections. Let's see, this one just has uh, Serpents of the Light and Once Upon the Cross. Mm. God damn. I'm getting ready to have a DSI marathon. Let me show you one of these booklets while I'm thinking about it, because these these are really cool. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Uh, the same company also did an X order set, and I was thinking about getting one, but I already have those albums as part of the Two from the Vault series. But look at this. They did a good job with these, as far as the packaging goes, and the remastering is really good, too. You know, it's not terribly loud. It's not terribly distorted. I think it was handled with a good amount of respect. And this one was obviously going to be everybody's least favorite set, because... Uh, these albums aren't particularly good, except for the live album, When Satan Lives. I talked about that one earlier. But hey, even these sound pretty good. So, there's that. There's Roadrunner United. I've been meaning to get this for a long time. Um, a pretty big part of metal culture. And here it is. Uh, this, of course, comes with the DVD with the making of. And now I just have to get the concert DVD. Let's see, we got Wild Mood Swings. I talked about this one earlier. Uh, not one of the best Cure albums, but it's in my collection. And here I am, continuing my emulation kick. Now, what in the world is this? Faith and the Muse. Remember the ethereal gothic rock band that I was talking about earlier? Well, this one was expensive and a bit of a pain in the ass to find, but we have the album. We have a live DVD. It comes with some music videos and some behind-the-scenes stuff. And let's see, we've got a book, which is supposed to be read backwards, kind of like a Japanese book, which in this case I don't think was used particularly effectively as far as that style is concerned, but it's pretty well put together, I'd say. You can feel the Celtic spirits as you listen to this album and read this book. And with all of these deliveries, that brings our numbers to 1,023 CDs in my collection. I work pretty fast, don't I? <laughs> well, hopefully this video went into as much detail as you hoped for last time, and hopefully this quenched your thirst. Plenty more to come. So, thank you for watching, and grind on.